Welcome to Circuit Secrets. In today's video, we will be working with I squared C on the Raspberry Pi Pico from the Arduino IDE. The Raspberry Pi Pico and Pico W have two I squared C ports that can be assigned to several pin combinations. In this video and example, we will learn how to assign pins to the I squared C channels, pass those to the Arduino wire library, and communicate with both ports. The example sketch we will be using is a port scanner that scans both ports and can be easily configured to change the SDA and SCL pins. The example sketch is available on the Circuit Secrets website, circuitsecrets.com. Now here we go into the code. Our example sketch begins by including the wire library. The wire library is used to communicate on I squared C when programming a microcontroller from the Arduino IDE. In the setup function, we first configure the pins for SDA and SCL on both ports. The pinout of the Raspberry Pi Pico shows the compatible pins for each port. I squared C0 can use GPIO pins as 0 and 1, 4 and 5, 8 and 9, 12 and 13, 16 and 17, or GPIO pins 20 and 21. I squared C port 1 can use GPIO pins 2 and 3, 6 and 7, 10 and 11, 14 and 15, 18 and 19, or GPIO pins 26 and 27. Next, we use a call to wire begin and wire 1 begin to start I squared C communications. Next, we start our serial communications so we can output our I squared C port findings to the terminal. Now we start a while loop that takes not serial as an argument. This causes the program to pause and wait until the serial port is connected. Next, we come to the loop function. In the loop function, we call the function scan I squared C and pass it the port number for an argument. We call the function twice once for port 0 and once for port 1. Then we delay the loop for 5 seconds. Next we come to the heart of the sketch, the scan I squared C function. This function takes an integer as an argument. This integer is used to determine the port to be scanned. We call this integer wire selection. Inside the function we create a couple of byte variables. One is called error code, the other is called device address. Next, we create an integer to hold the total number of devices found. It is called total devices. Now we print to the serial monitor and let the user know the scan is now happening. Next, we come to a for loop that will step through the valid addresses of I squared C devices. According to the I squared C specification, the first and last eight addresses are reserved, so we know we shouldn't find devices there. This is why we set the device address variable to eight at the beginning and limit its top value in the loop to less than 120. Addresses 0 through 7 and addresses 120 through 127 are reserved. Now we come to the I squared C port switching. If wire selection, the value passed to the function when we called it, is set to 1, we call wire 1 begin transmission. Any other value will result in port 0, the default port, being scanned. This is caused by the else statement, which is a partner to the aforementioned if statement. We pass the error code variable, the return, from wire1 in transmission function. The in transmission function will return an error code of 0 if a device is able to respond on the last called address. An error code of 4 occurs if there is a bad connection or noise, such as when the SDA and SCL pins have not been defined. A timeout error usually means there is no device to answer on the given address. In the else statement, we do the same thing we just did on port 1 on the default I squared C port, port 0, using wire instead of wire 1. Next, we come to the code that deals with the error code. If the error code is 0 and a device responds, we execute the next code block. In this code block, we print the device's address to the serial monitor. If the address is less than 16, we need to add the leading 0 to the address because the numbers are usually simplified. We specify the output of the print statement as hex. Because an error code of 0 means a device was found, we increment the total devices counter. Next, we deal with the error code for state inside of an else if. Again, we correct for the leading 0 and output the information to the serial port. Next, we print the total number of devices found with some logic to change the grammar from singular to plural based on the number of devices found. This is the result of the scanner if we have a display attached to port 1. This source code is available at circuitsecrets.com. No sign up required. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications. 
There are more videos on the way covering I squared C and the Raspberry Pi Pico programmed from the Arduino IDE. Let me know if you want to see any specific topics I have not covered in my previous videos. Thanks for watching.